So welcome uh, all of you. Uh, my name is Anand from uh, Rapider. I manage the uh, SMB business for Rapider in India. And uh, today I wish you all a very good afternoon. <clears throat> this uh, webinar that we have invited today for is uh, in association with AWS. And uh, just to give a quick intro about uh, Rapider. Rapider was uh, born in cloud five years ago. And today we stand as an advanced consulting partner to AWS. Our journey began with five member team uh, with 18 logos in 2017. And today we stand tall with 225 comrades digitally transforming more than 500 clients uh, for AWS competencies like DevOps, workspace, large migration, workload, Microsoft workload consulting puts us ahead of the curve, uh, you know, at par with the other cloud consulting businesses that we have in the country today. Our key customers includes, uh, you know, customers from uh, industries like FinTech, software, internet, manufacturing uh, industries. And uh, as of date, we have launched more than 4,000 plus VMs and uh, 125 plus uh, uh, managed service customers that we serve today, 24 bar seven with 99.99% uh, plus uptime uh, on time completion. And uh, uh, our teams are <clears throat> certified with 100, 100 plus uh, AWS badges. So that's a, that's a quick intro about uh, uh, Rapider. And uh, while I say this, I would just uh, share my screen for a quick reference to uh, you know the small deck that's there for your uh, visual uh, acceptance here. So this is our uh, management team from Rapido. Uh, Amit Gupta, who heads the uh, organization and he founded it uh, five years back along with Atria, who uh, is our CTO. Ajay uh, is our chief operating officer. Ashish Kaul uh, heads the national sales and Puneet uh, takes care of the entire marketing uh, division for us. And uh, leadership team uh, is headed by Vishwas for startup. Uh, Avinash takes care of the enterprise business. I take care of the SMB business for Pan India. Ravi is our alliance uh, and partnership head and Chetan Malhotra manages the uh, pre-sales and solution architects team. So that's a quick intro about them. Our, our consulting journey, as, we, uh, as I mentioned, we started in 2017 with five member team and we took a long way, long time to grow to this level where we stand today. Uh, 18 logos, it was the first year uh, achievement that we have uh, had. And then uh, gradually we grew from there. We built our AWS competencies and uh, we acquired more logos and we had better credible uh, you know, uh, uh, services offered in the market today, which leads us to be the advanced consulting partner for 2021, that award we got last year. And then that's how we keep scaling. And uh, recently we uh, got awarded with uh, migration certificate competency as well, where we do large migrations, uh, uh, you know, for organizations. And uh, this is our uh, Rapider, uh, uh, say on AWS website, which is like a testimonial from the OEM itself. Uh, what I spoke about the four competencies and uh, we, we have done, uh, you know, some uh, amazing numbers to showcase here just for quick uh, visual per view, more than 700 uh, orders that we have processed uh, in the last uh, three years of time, uh, 4,000 plus VMs, which I said earlier. Our NPS score is 9.7, uh, which is pretty uh, decent uh, being above uh, 9.5. Uh, 3,400 3, uh, plus VMs we are still managing today with an uptime of 99% plus. Some major wins, some uh, major customers, which we highlight today, and we take pride in, uh, you know, displaying their names, logos here. Uh, we, it's a, it's a blend of uh, different uh, customers coming from various industries, from fintech, software, internet, manufacturing, and so on. Uh, that that's it from me uh, from uh, Rapido side. So I would uh, like to uh, hand over the platform to. Uh, Meghnadan Mohan, who is with me here in this platform from AWS, uh, who is the solution architect. And uh, Shantanu also is a part of this platform from AWS, who is uh, uh, the business manager. So uh, 
Meghnathan, I would like you to uh, take this uh, engagement forward and uh, engage, uh, you know, with the app modernization uh, and its use cases. Uh, just to give a brief uh, before uh, Meghnathan takes over, this session would be for about 35 to 40 minutes, and uh, we would use uh, 10 to 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. And uh, in case if any participant uh, has any questions in between, uh, please feel free to type that in the chat box. We have uh, uh, moderators and supporters here who could uh, possibly try and uh, tackle that as well. In case if we are not, then we would definitely take it up in the last 10 minutes of time. So uh, Meghnathan, all over to you. Hi everyone. Like this is uh, thanks Anand like for the introduction. Like this is Meghanathan Mohan. I'm a solutions architect at AWS. Like today I'm going to cover application modernization. Like another different options available on AWS. So so this is the agenda uh, I have today. Right. So first I'm going to cover like why and what. Like what is like modernization? Why do we need that? Right. And then like some of the pitfalls like uh, customers usually do right, which they can avoid. I think I'll I'll, I'll showcase what are the different pitfalls they can avoid. And then like uh, I'll touch base on all the design patterns, like uh, various design patterns that help you to bring your uh, journey into migrate your application onto the cloud, right? That is the point which I'm going to cover. And then the, finally the process as well as the next path ahead, so which we're going to cover one by one. So first, like first we'll cover what is modernization, right? So say, when you say, when you think about modernization, it's basically it's a process, right? Where actually you have your existing legacy application and you can modernize that uh, basically, you know, modernize their application or platform infrastructure, right? And their internal architecture as well as other features. So when you say a modernization, you don't think about as an application layer, you need to think about the infrastructure layer, right? What are the benefits you are going to get by modernizing the infrastructure layer as well? So I'm going to talk more about infrastructure application level. What are the different options available, right? We'll, we'll deep dive into all those things one by one. So, so by mo modernizing, right, what are the benefits we are going to get, right? So if you see, right, anything, if you want to stick to some legacy application, right? In the long run, you will not be able to like uh, make a new addition into your application. So, if, for example, if you start, if you like, say there will be like a number of frameworks in the market, right? That are coming, keep on updating new frameworks that is coming on the uh, development side, web application development side, right? So we keep updating ourselves so that we can get the latest features available with the product as well. So, so that is the whole idea, like right? so. What you need to do is like, basically there is an innovation flywheel which you need to take, like, so you need to do some experimentation. If based on the experimentation, you try to get the feedback and then see like if that is like doing a better use for you, right? Then you can implement those ideas into the product. So that's how you need to think about the modernization aspect. So basically if you want to do that, right? Your application architecture should be modular in nature, right? And your release cycle, you should have faster release cycle, right? So basically the reason for that, right? If you so break your application into simple uh, modelers, right? Modules. So what will happen is like uh, you can you can release your uh, features right easily to the market with a faster release cycle, like rather than like keeping it a um, three months once, right? You can do it weekly and daily as well if you want to do that as well. And if you have break down into smaller unit, right? The, the the thing is right if you fail it, right? You can fail fast and then you can learn from that and you can. can Fix it, and you can, based on the feedback, you can fix it, and you can start moving on that. So, so that way, uh, keeping it modular as a nature, right, will help you to uh, modernize your application in long run as well. So, and you can also, right, think about modernization, right? You need to think about automation as well. So, you don't see, for example, think about an infrastructure, right? Uh, we usually build our infrastructure before doing a deployment, right? So there'll be a lot of activities. Uh, people spend a lot of operation teams, spend a lot of time, right? Spinning up the infrastructure necessary for doing the deployment. Rather, right, we can use infrastructure as a whole, right? That actually we can include in an automation CI CD pipeline, right? Where actually the end to end pipeline will take care of your uh, uh, provisioning the infrastructure before you deploy your application into the AWS environment. So we'll see all about that uh, one by one, right? And these are some of the common questions right? people get right when we, when they when they think about application modernization. Like the first one is like, how can I move my workload to the cloud? Okay, um, whether I can use uh, containers or serverless for my workload. Right. So these are some of the questions. Right. How can I modernize my apps? Right. So these are the questions which are going going to get answered at the end of this session. Right. I'm so so before that, I just want to start a quick poll. Like, let me know once you are able to see the poll. Like, just quickly respond to the poll. Um, 
Fine. So the, the question is right. So um, this the reason for this question, right? So are you managing the infrastructure and the environment for the application that you run today, right? So the, the, the reason, right? You may be choosing yes and no, right? So the, the idea is right. Managing the infrastructure and the environment, right? We do it on the on-premise as well, right? We keep everything. We manage everything from uh, uh, like uh, from the infrastructure to say the environment, right? Rather than application part as well, right? So the, the idea is right. Uh, the, and when you, when you think about application modernization, right, you need to delegate this kind of heavy lifting, like managing the infrastructure, managing the environment to the, uh, uh, basically to the uh, like cloud provider like AWS, right? So they'll they'll manage the infrastructure and the environment for you. Like you will be focusing more on the business functionality which you want to build, right? So that's the whole idea. I think I want to just use that question. Like say, if you want to migrate, right? Um, there is a patterns available, right? So the, this is based on the data that we have from uh, the, the customer, uh, uh, on the data which we have from uh, various customer who, who did the migration on AWS, right? If you see, right, uh, uh, most of the customer, almost 30 to 40% of the customer, right, they do rehost, right? Rehost meaning like they do a lift and shift, whatever they have on premises right now, right? They do a lift and shift, directly they lift and shift into the cloud, right? And while some of the customer, they do lift and upgrade as well. So meaning like, say for example, if they are running some uh, like uh, some legacy Windows server, they want to upgrade their Windows server to the latest Windows server. They do that uh, through the lift and shift process. So this is actually around 30 to 40% of the customer, they do this way, right? And then we have relocate, right? And almost like 10% of the customer, right? Say for example, they may be running an, uh, uh, like a virtualization, like using VMware on premises. What they do is they'll directly uh, use VMware cloud on AWS to migrate the workload directly to the cloud, right? They just uh, relocating, whatever they have on premises, this is relocating on the cloud using uh, VMware cloud, uh, so like who is the partner who provides services for uh, VM, VMware cloud on AWS. And then the remaining 20%, right? The rest of the 20%, right? Um, people use a re-platform. So what they do is, right? Um, they have, say, for example, uh, uh, a Windows uh, operating system where actually they, there will be licensing costs which are incurred on that. So what, rather than like reducing the licensing cost, what they do is, right? They just uh, uh, convert that into Linux, for example. So from Windows to Linux, right? So they, they can do that by using re-platform, right? And 10% of the people will do refactoring. So this is what completely re-architect their architecture and completely they do the redevelopment, right? So you can see like almost 10% of the people do refactoring as well, right? And finally, like uh, some of the people, right? Around 5%, right? Uh, the customers they use, uh, uh, they try to move to SaaS product that is available, uh, which they want to directly use it on the cloud as well. Some of the like uh, the software as a service offering that is provided by multiple vendors as well. They use that. And uh, around 10 percentage, right, they think that they'll retain it or they retire it because like they don't need that particular application or uh, that might be an internal application which they, do, they long, no longer want to migrate to the cloud. Okay. So these are some of the patterns which we, they, most of the customer follow, right? So we can see the maximum will be like 30 to 40 will be rehost and then relocate, replatform and refactor. So these are the aspects they do, right? So I talk about, right, some of the pitfalls, right, the customers follow. So if you see here, right, um, the, Think about the left part, right? This is the on-premises world, right? Whatever you see on the left is the on-premises world. And whatever you see on the right side is the AWS, where actually uh, uh, whatever the services we are offering on the AWS side. On the on-premise side, right, they have uh, many applications which actually have a complex architecture or maybe some of the application may be some performance issue, right? Some of them will be legacy. Some of them will have a licensing issue. So all this thing, they want to move it to the cloud, right? And the, you can see there is a bridge between uh, the on-premises and the AWS, right? So think about the bridge as the cloud foundation or security alignment or think about operation part, right? So most of the customer, right, when they want to migrate or modernize their workload and moving to cloud, right, they will try to build this bridge, right? They'll try to build this bridge and they want to manage the bridge as well, right? So this is what most of the customer uh, nowadays, right, they want to manage everything. So think about Think about infrastructure, think about operating system, patching, updating, backup, right? All these activities, right? They want to do it on their own. Uh, and then, right, they spend some time migrating this application to AWS, right? So if you if you want to get the real benefit of AWS, right, where actually say we, we have many services like uh, AML services that will you can start using it from, re, because it's all API driven, you can start using it from day one. And there are like some of the um, uh, elasticity benefits that you can get like uh, high performance scaling, everything you can get it, right? So, so rather than you build the bridge, right, um, uh, AWS provides some pre-baked pre, pre, pre build, they already build the bridge. 
which actually can reuse like for example right aws offering some some of the offerings like managed services right where you don't need to worry about the in infrastructure and say think about serverless right we offer serverless offerings right there actually you don't need to worry about and managing your servers at all you can think only about your business application how you want to build it and how you want to serve your end customer right rather than focusing and managing this part you focus more on how we can um, like can you delegate this building the bridge and managing the bridge part to aws and you can can focus on building the application whatever uh, uh, things which you you want to improve on the modernization part right you can do that on aws rather working on this part so that's uh, oh, that's actually that's what i want to communicate on this particular diagram so let's take another quick poll um, uh, so i hope you are able to see the screen right so 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 the architecture pattern what i am trying to say right there are different patterns available uh, right now and if you see right monolithic right i can see like 43% of the people still using monolithic architecture and like uh, only 7% i can see microservices 14% even given architectures and serverless i can see like 7% of the people using it right and other architecture they are using 29% so the reason like i just post this post right so we have different architecture pattern with the different benefits right when you talk about monolith right i'll talk about what are the what are the drawbacks uh, with the monolith architecture and how we can move towards microservice architecture or even given architecture or serverless actually so we'll see one by one uh, let me quickly move on to the next slide uh, so the monolithic architecture so when you talk about monolithic architecture right everything will be be bundled into a single unit right so uh, i think since most of the uh, customers are still using monolithic architecture you have a presentation layer you have a business logic layer you have a data so everything will be bundled into a single huge application right so it is it is we call it as a tightly bound application right so if you want to make any change right what will happen is like even um, that will be challenging right so this there can be a some code which will be used by other 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 modules as well right if you make change on a particular module that may affect other modules as well because of the tightly coupled architecture right so basically this application has single database which actually uh, take care of all the data storage related activities it does everything for you and um, scaling will be like for example if you want to scale only the ui layer right you need to scale the entire application because everything is bundled into a single unit right you need to scale the entire application that's again a challenge for you and uh, uh, if you say for example if you build this application using java framework for example right and if you want to move it to say python or say c sharp for example right, it's very hard to do that because the entire uh, architecture is tightly bound right you cannot Uh, break a couple of uh, pieces and then you want to change it to different tech stack as well. So it will be time consuming and it will be a lot of challenges for you to do or migrate to different tech stacks as well, right? So that is again and deployment process, right? For uh, as I told you, right? For example, if you are if you are just changing an, uh, a login screen with uh, like couple of lines of code, you're just adding some URL on the login screen, right? Even if you make a couple of change lines of code changes, right? You need to redeploy the entire application to production if you want to move that change to uh, production, right? So again, this is. again a pain point you take a lot of time for the deployment maybe the entire bundle may be like uh, more than like say for under 500 mb uh, of a source code for example right okay so this is the this is the uh, drawback with the monolithic architecture right to to help with that right we have multiple pattern that is available in the market right, that you can use right so first one is microservices okay so when you talk about microservices right rather than it is an exact opposite to monolithic architecture where actually in monolithic architecture okay in monolithic architecture uh, we have um, say um, um, everything bundled into a single unit right where actually we here in the microservices architecture we are breaking that into uh, depending upon the module right for example think about this service right authentication as a service right we we keep one service as authentication one as like say uh, for example order booking service one is shopping cart service right one is payment service you can have the n number of services and each services can talk to each other using different uh, api calls basically rest apis or http apis right web socket apis so because in, in the another flexibility with microservices that right so for example i can develop this service using java this service using dot net or this service using python or node js whatever tech stack i want i can do that right because the entire communication is going to happen between each services using json right so this is a common language every services will understand so and since like uh, each service will be independent each will each service will have their own database and if you have want to uh, use a reusable module right you can generate a utility module for example this one which can be consumed by all the other services so you don't need to rewrite the code again and again you can reuse the code as well so that's the power you can uh, with the microservice architecture and uh, uh, 
so these are some of the benefits right uh, you get it on the microservices architecture if you want to deep dive into how the architecture looks like say think about a, a web a web client for example a browser right we have a load balancer which will distribute the load and it will hit your uh, microservice one for example think about storefront device or microservice right and then it in turn talks to other microservices like it can be an account lookup service shipment service and so on each service will have tied to a database for example if you see right which will have different database depending upon the need and if you have other clients like mobile client right they can talk through api gateway so api gateway is a place where you can define your api uh, service and we within the api service that will be a map to a back end microservice actually right so this is how the entire flow works and it will be like modular in nature if you want to say for example think about there is an issue with say for example um, uh, a notification service right think about this is a notification service right even if there is an issue or a notification service your entire application will be still running right only the notification part will have an issue like right? you will get a message little delayed right until we fix this module rest all will be working as per your need right you don't need to do anything on that so if you have a monolithic architecture if some part of your application failed the entire application failed you need to redeploy your entire workload here in this case right, you need to fix only this module or the notification module which actually have an issue you need to fix that and then as soon as you deploy it right since it's modular in nature right, it's easy to fix and once you release it right you can see the user will not see any changes right automatically it's connect to notification and send uh, the respective notification to the end users as well right so that's the power you get with the microservices architecture so moving on the next architecture pattern is event driven i see the most of the customers are using event driven architecture as well and this is one of the uh, uh, like important architecture based on our use cases right for example um, if you think about this pattern right so event routers what what did i mean so consider there is a, 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 a service right which produces messages and these service want to send the message to uh, uh, this particular four different services one two three four right so if if i want to send a message right i can i can create a direct link between this service and this service right this service and this service this service so that one as soon as i send a message right all four will get the message right so this is actually default every uh, architecture pattern we usually follow right so what what if right if some of these services fail right the think about this is the producer and this is the consumer so consumer 2 has been failed right and producer send the message to all the four consumer right what will happen is since this particular service is out right the message we will not get to this particular consumer p for example right so what will happen again this need to resend it again and again and again until this become active right so this will be a pain point for um, um, if you want to have a tightly coupled architecture right? to do that right uh, this event driven architecture how it works we have a router in between right so router what it does is right um, this the producer will send the message to router and then router will send the message to all the consumer so the, this we call it as a publisher subscriber model as soon as publisher push the message right it will store it in a router and the router will take care of sending the message to respective consumers right it will push the message to all the consumers similarly we have asynchronous event so we have synchronous event uh, we we heard about synchronous and asynchronous right synchronous is real time so if you send a request you will get the response immediately right if you want to send a request and say for example the client want to send a request to service b right and he don't want the response immediately for example right in that case what the client will do is right we have an intermediate service in between right uh, the client will send it to service a and then he can start working on other activities i think about a use case something like this say for example you want to generate a report right uh, consider the client want to generate a report on the uh, banking transaction whatever you do right uh, the report generation will say take at least 3 hours for time right so the client cannot wait 3 hours right is it is it an asynchronous call the client sent a request to the uh, portal and the portal will send a request like right? basically he sent a request to service a basically service a what it does is right? it will send call the reporting service basically the reporting service will generate the report it may take like 3 to 4 hours after that right will send a message to service a which again communicate to the client that your report is ready ready for you to view your report right so, so the client no need to wait uh, for it uh, until the report is been generated so, so this is we call it as a decoupled architecture right and similarly we have event store the same process like Uh, somebody will push that uh, messages to an event store and then some of the services will pull this messages from the event store right this is also possible with the event driven architecture so so to, to help you understand like what are the different services available in aws to help you with event driven architecture right so sqs is one service which is a simple queue service um this is what um, the client will send a message to and queue and then Consider Lambda is actually as a worker who can pull the messages from the queue and then they can store it in the database. So rather than client directly talk to Lambda, 
we have an intermediate we are decoupling it so that we send a message and then client need not worry about whether the message has been sent it to lambda or not so lambda will pull the message and get the message store it in dynamo db similarly we have publish and subscribe as we discussed right even router even router you can think about sns so simple notification service so somebody will post a message to a notification service in a topic as soon as it receives right it will fan out whoever will be the subscriber it can be an sql it can be an lambda right send the message to all the uh, subscriber who subscribe for the message and then they can process it on their own basis so depending upon the use case right always try to use event driven architecture which actually has more benefits compared to tightly coupled architectures right um so just take one more poll um let me quickly so they're sharing the result right so if you see right are you building new application or refactor legacy applications right so when you when you think about right building a new application on the cloud right or if you want to refactor your application so we have multiple patterns we saw for modernization right refactor is one way where you do entire re architecture right or if you want to build a new application from the scratch right think about serverless right if you want to uh, think about uh, um, like um, the serverless is a concept right where you don't need to worry about any servers or you don't need to worry about uh, um, Uh, worry about any any uh, managing any infrastructure. So just think about building the business logic. Rest all will be taken care by AWS. We'll see deep about what actually serverless is, right? So basically, serverless is right behind the scene. There are servers, but everything will be managed by AWS. So in the most of them will think about like when you talk about serverless, right? They think about compute layer. Uh, we have Lambda as a service, right? It's a serverless uh, function as a service. It's one of the serverless offering. and we do have fargate fargate is related to containers so if you are running a container workload uh, like uh, uh, docker containers or kubernetes right then you can use um, to 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 run your infrastructure to run your containers right we have a service called fargate which is a serverless service offering from aws right where you can uh, do uh, whatever like um, um, you don't need to worry about the infrastructure scaling and scaling down everything right all will be managed by aws fargate right automatically this is on the compute side not only from the compute side we have serverless offering from other areas as well data store you may hear about s3 right it's an object store it's fully uh, serverless and we have uh, aurora as a database offering we have serverless offering which is actually uh, you don't need to uh, manage the infrastructure you don't need to scale up and down right everything will be managed by depending upon your need it will be automatically scales up and down and also like if you are not using it right if you have some unpredicted workload right then you can go for serverless right it will stop and stop based on your need as well right and we have have one more offering called dynamo db which is a no sql database on the cloud right which is a serverless again and there are integration services which we discussed right api gateway sqs and sns all three are uh, like some of the integration services which are serverless again right uh, take one more uh, poll uh, before we move now okay so the as you see right there are like uh, like 19% of the uh, customers still using physical servers to run the database workload right meaning like they are on premises they are running managing all the infrastructure for the database need right and like around 44% are using using virtual machines as well right basically kind of an ec2 where they have launched the database for example right and like around 69% so around like 69% i can see managed database right so, so basically the idea is right when you think about database right when you think about application modernization you need to think about modernizing your database as well right so by modernizing right i mean right rather than managing the infrastructure from your end right say so for example like physical servers or like self managing your databases right you can delegate that part to aws right and even if you are running your database on virtual machine like ec2 uh, for example you are running some mysql server sql server or mysql on ec2 right where okay, you you need to manage the operating system patching updating backing backup everything you need to do that right um, rather right if you like i can see like around 16% of the people are using managed database on cloud right so basically offerings like rds aurora right these are some of the offerings where you don't need to worry about uh, managing the database you can simply like uh, you you will get that uh, database url uh, passwords right where you can you can focus more on creating the tables right and how you want to store the data how you want to uh, secure your data so that your focus will be more on that rather than managing the infrastructure part okay uh, let me close it right so so modernizing database as i told you right so we should not um, uh, we should modernize like moving uh, migrating to managed database that's our whole focus right when you do a modernization journey with your application right so for example right if you see right the first one is uh, moving towards fully managed databases like rds aurora right this is one thing and move, building modern application using purpose built database i'll talk about what are purpose built databases right? for example if you see right when it, when i say fully managed database right in the on premise world if you manage everything right you need to take care of everything like right? whatever you see on the bottom right 
but the the actual need for you is like schema design query construction and query optimization that's what your application need the rest all will be taking care uh, for a, for a failover scenarios for backups right recoveries uh, like scalability high availability you are doing all this other other uh, uh, activities right so if you see fully managed database right aws will take care of all the yellow highlighted here right you can see right you will be focusing more on the schema design query construction and query optimization so that's the power you'll get right if you move towards managed database like rds right and when you talk about purpose built database we have multiple database options available offerings available uh, if you see right in the relational database we have rds and aurora right and the key value we have dynamo db uh, which is actually a no, no sql offering from aws and for document storage like if you want to have a uh, workload similar to mongo db right where you are using document storage right you can use document db and for in memory caching right we have um, uh, elastic cache it's a uh, uh, it provides like a couple of flavors you have uh, even you can use redis or mm cached so both the open source frameworks are available for you and it's a managed uh, service again and for graph or uh, storing the relationship you can use neptune and similarly uh, for time series we have time stream for ledger we have qldb and for white column we have key space so depending upon your need you need to think about what is your purpose right why we are doing if you want to store key value you should not think about relational database you should think about dynamo db right if you want to store document think about document db that will give you more benefit and more power for your application needs okay so now we going to talk about um, uh, modernization right so when you talk about modernization right there are five key aspects you need to take before uh, you you take your modernization journey. The first one is the architectural pattern. Right? What what is the part, pattern you are going to use? We discussed about various patterns, right? Even through one more, uh, more like microservices, right? So think about modular in nature. You make sure that your application will be modular in nature, right? And when you think about operational, right? Think about serverless, right? Where you don't need to worry about managing any servers, right? You can focus only on your business application, right? That is actually a, you need to you need to think about serverless as your option, right? And the third one is de developer agility, right? Um, uh, anything you do right on the uh, on the modernization, right? Think about automating it, right? You don't need to in involve any manual interval. For example, think about uh, build process, right? Entire uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment process. You can do it using like using uh, DevOps tool that is supported by AWS and other uh, third party providers, right? You don't need to do anything manually. As soon as you commit the code until you go to the production server, right? Um, everything will be automated for you, right? So think about in that aspect and pro programmatic guard, right? So we have many management and governance tools that can help you to uh, to, to, to secure your environment, to, 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 to make sure that who can access what and everything you can do that. And finally, for the data management part, Think about decoupled architecture. You don't directly tied an application to a database. Rather, you have an uh, intermediate service like SQS, right? For keeping a decoupled uh, architecture in nature so that you not lose any data. And also purpose-built database. As we discussed, right? There are many purpose-built database. For each purpose, there will be a database uh, already available, right? Think about which will be suitable for your use case and then use it, right? It's like one more poll now uh, before we move on, right? The reason for this question, right? Are you running any container workloads either on premises or on the cloud, right? Um, so I see like 13% of the people are still uh, using Docker, right? Uh, for containerization and like 25% of the people are using Kubernetes and um, like around 69% are not using like both actually for the, uh, for the any any container workload for now, right? So when you think about container workloads, right? Um, I'll tell you like what actually AWS offers and let me quickly move on to the next slide. Okay, so when you see, right, um, the first is like managing everything on the on-premises world. If you see, right, uh, everything on the physical machine where you manage everything, okay? This is uh, the first part where actually you need to do everything. The second one is like using EC2, right? And then you are deploying your application, it's kind of a lift and shift, right? Where you use EC2 machines and then you de deploy your entire workloads from on-premises to the cloud, right? This is virtual machine where actually the infrastructure will be managed by AWS, rest all you need to manage, right? And then third one is containers. When you talk about containers, right? Um, uh, just uh, as we discussed, right? So most of them are using Docker and uh, uh, Kubernetes, right? So basically, uh, AWS provides a couple of offerings, right? For container uh, orchestration or container management uh, services, we have ECS and EKS, right? ECS is Elastic uh, Kubernetes, uh, Elastic Container Service, and we have, we do have Elastic Kubernetes services, as well, right? So both these are helpful for you if you want to bring your container workload onto the cloud, right? And this will take care of managing your, uh, um, like basically you package your uh, 
application is a container image and then like rest all will be taken care by um, the container um, orchestration services that is provided by AWS, right? And finally, right, if you see, right, the last option is serverless, right? So this is how the evolution should be, right? So from starting from on-premises world, people are migrating to lift and shift to virtual machine, and then they move to containerization, right? They do like, uh, as I told you, right? They use uh, ECS and EKS, right? And even ECS, EKS, right? And there will be an option where you need to manage uh, your underlying infrastructure using EC2, right? Uh, if you want to delegate that to cloud, right? We have a service called Fargate, which is a serverless offering, right? where you don't need to worry about uh, how your containers are going to run on the cloud, right? The AWS Fargate will take care of uh, all this, um, whatever you want to do, right, on uh, uh, like AWS, right? And Lambda, as, you, as I told you, right, so it's a serverless offering, uh, it's a function as a service, where you can write a piece of code, and then you can just upload it, and then like, uh, you just run it, right? You don't need to worry about how your programs are executing, who is, exactly how we, uh, like, uh, uh, like, nothing you need to worry about, just, Upload the code and then like it will uh, it will run you and get, get the results back to you, right? Only the compute for whatever you're using, right? You need to pay for it, right? You don't need to pay for uh, if you are not using a lambda function, you don't need to use pay any 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 uh, cost for the lambda service again, right? That's the power you're going to get. So if you see from the left to right, right, your focus on business logic will be more here. You'll be focusing only on your business logic, okay? And here you need to like focus on your infrastructure. Here you, again, you need to focus on uh, like operating system layer, environment, and so on and so forth. Here you are just packaging your code. Again, you need to manage your infrastructure for running your containers. But here in this part, you don't need to worry about anything. Everything is serverless, right? So the, your ultimate goal is right moving towards serverless. So because the level of abstraction, if you see, right, um, everything is abstracted here. You don't know from which server it is running, how it is running, everything is abstracted for you. And you just have the code, business logic, it will run on the cloud, right? So that's the power you'll get from the server software. So with the my, my, my modernization pathway, we have multiple options available, as I told you. Uh, we have, uh, if you want to build cloud native architecture, as I see most of them are trying to build a new application on the cloud, right? Think about serverless first, right? That is the first thing you need to think about. When you think about re-platform, right? Uh, think about containerization and cluster migration. If you want to refactor, right, then, uh, um, Think about how to use a different modernized architecture that you can build actually as well. And for shared services platform, we have many tools and governance uh, tools that is available like CloudWatch, Cloud Trail, and so on and so forth. Uh, for security, we have multiple offerings that, that you can use, make use of it for uh, the service platforms as well. Okay. So finally, I'm going to talk about the tools that are available, which will help you to uh, ease your migration journey, right? When it's an active container, for example, if you have a .NET application or a Java application on premises, right, you want to migrate to the cloud. If you run this service, right, it's an app to container as a service. It's a, it's a command line utility, right? When you run it, what will happen is it will analyze your application and it all the dependencies will analyze and then it will create a container image for you, right? Not only the container image, basically it will create a Docker image and then it will store that image in say uh, Ela uh, Elastic Container Repository, which is ECR, right? And then it also create a, 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 like a, a ECS uh, a task definition for you. And as well as uh, if you are using, going to use Kubernetes, right? Part definition is also created for you. So by default, everything will be available. And it also provide you cloud formation template that will help you to set up the CA CD pipeline on the cloud as well. So everything will be automated, right? Just running the tool, you'll you will get everything, uh, all the benefit you need by for moving your workload to the cloud. The second one is like uh, porting assistant for .NET, right? This is if you have a .NET uh, uh, application that is running on .NET framework, which you want to convert to .NET core, then um, this is this is the tool for you. I think this will help you to assess your uh, application, right? .NET framework application portfolio, and generate uh, the compatibility report as well. And if there is something is not compatible, we'll provide an alternate option for you as well. So moving on, right? Uh, uh, for example, if you want to re-platform, right? Uh, say for example, to reduce the licensing cost, you want to. Uh, move your Windows workload to Linux, for example, right? Then if you have uh, this, this tool will be helpful, right? Um, help you to migrate your uh, Windows workload to Linux, for example, right? So I think it will reduce your Windows licensing cost. And database migration, as I told you, right? Uh, if you are running on a physical machine on on-premises, or if you are running on an easy to machine, any database, right? If you want to migrate to um, uh, like manage database like RDS, Aurora, right? or DynamoDB, then you can use database migration service. So this service will help you to migrate your uh, database from uh, on-premises or from EC2 to manage services again, right? And say, for example, if it, this is for homogeneous database, 
concerns if you want to migrate heterogeneous database like say for example from oracle to mysql or uh, say sql server to aurora right if you want to do that the schema from the source and the target database may be different right the, the schema may not uh, be matched so for that we have a schema conversion tool in addition with the database migration tool right it will convert your source schema into target schema and it will be loaded into a target database and database migration service will help you migrate your data from source to target so, so this will help you for database migration even homogeneous or heterogeneous database okay so finally i think uh, this is for if you want to like uh, migrate like uh, sql server to postgres sql uh, we can use this utility like babel fs for postgres this will help you to migrate if you have a new case of uh, migrating sql server to postgres sql right okay so finally and just don't take much time so so if you think about modernization engineering, right, I want to close it with uh, like another couple of minutes and then I'll take more questions. So when, when you think about modernization, right? On the on-premise world, you see, right? You are managing the infrastructure, you are managing the operating system and environment, you are managing the architecture and the applications. Everything you are taking control on the on-premises world, right? By just moving to the cloud, right? With the, with the modernization journey, right? First, you do a lift and shift, for example, right? The customer, as I told you, 40% of the customer, they first they do the lift and shift and then they see the benefit of the cloud and then they start doing a refactoring one by one, right? So first, they'll do the lift and shift. By doing the lift and shift, right, um, uh, you'll get the car reduction in cost, right? You can, you can get the cloud benefits actually directly from there. And then you can do the right sizing, right? Sometimes you may not have the right sizing or right instance type as selected for your workload, right? The cloud provides all the different options for you, right? You can choose the right sizing based on the CloudWatch metrics, right? You know, like how much your CPU can crisis, how much your memory, right? You can reduce it or you can increase it depending on the, and you can also scale it depending upon the workload need, right? Auto scaling is available for um, you know, like any easy to workloads, right? Where you can reduce your uh, cost drastically by just doing the right sizing. And then we have uh, another option called opt pricing models. So we, we provide multiple pricing models, like one is a savings plan and reserved instances. That will help you to reduce your cost further if you have one or three year commitment uh, for your uh, compute workload that you are running on the cloud, right? And then licensing, as I told you, re-platform, right? Uh, migrating Windows workload to Linux, right? You can, can reduce your licensing cost as well. Finally, like moving to managed services and serverless offerings, right? Whatever we discussed, right? You, you don't need to worry about any infrastructure environment or actually you need to worry about but only your application layer where you get maximum benefit out of it. Finally, we have other options available uh, for uh, optimization on the cloud. We have a well-architected uh, uh, framework that is available built in, right? That help you to assist you on uh, various areas. Further, you can reduce cost on whatever you are using, consuming on the cloud, right? There are other options available. So, so by 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 just doing the level of modernization, right? You can see the reduction of cost uh, from day by day, right? By by doing the modernization journey. Okay. And to how can how can we help, right? On modernization, we have multiple options, right? Uh, I think uh, we have a, a MEP program, which is my, my modernization acceleration program. We have a modernization lab. Right, Windows modernization program. There are multiple programs available for the customers, right? Uh, this program will help you to uh, start your migration journey onto the cloud. And we do have like portfolio assessment, right? We do assessment uh, based on modernization journey, right? If you want to help support from our side, right? We'll help you to assist your portfolio and, and assist you with the right direction on which architecture to choose, how to use various services like serverless offering that is provided from the cloud as well. So we do have a workshop, right? Immersion workshop. Uh, that you can use of like if you need any of this right just connect with the account team and they'll help you with uh, various programs and assist you in but okay so again so this is not the end again right for the modernization this is just the beginning right uh, start uh, engaging with us right we'll help you whatever base possible for you to uh, like uh, modernize your workload whatever you have i think i see like most of them are still uh, running um, not not into containers as well right or serverless offerings right so if you want to uh, know more about that right get in touch with us and we'll help you whatever possible ways and help you modernize your application so thank you once again and uh, i think i'll take uh, any questions if you want to have thank thanks for the thank you so much thank you so much megan yeah. that that was quite informative and i think there are four questions uh, <laughs> so I, if you can just uh, answer those questions also uh, which have been sure, typed yeah. in in the q and a window yeah i, I can able to see the screen i can see that one second so do I take a tactical approach or strategic approach for modernization? How do I get return on investment, right? Okay, so, so there are like, as you, as, you, as, you, as you ask, right? So basically, right, I need to understand your workload first, actually. So 
before you do any modernization journey right try to see like what actually say what is your application architecture right now right and uh, uh, based on that right? say for example if you have a monolithic architecture you cannot do uh, you cannot do that into microservice architecture from day one right we need to take an approach how we can do that maybe you can do a left and separate right? and then right we can take the pieces whichever the pieces right we see great importance to the customer or whatever new features which you want to add right then you can start bringing into uh, uh, like a uh, modernization aspect they bring in microservices one by one right so that you'll get the maximum benefit out of it and you'll get uh, the return on investment uh, like as soon as you start doing your migration journey one by one okay so basically we need to understand your workload right that will help us to un like understand like what are the different approach you can take right um, maybe it can be a tactical or strategic approach but at the end right the modernization is what we need to think about as i told you on the chart as well the slide right so and, until our ultimate goal is towards like serverless architecture so that right you need be, you don't need to focus on any application infrastructure part you will be focusing more on your business logic how we can provide a business uh, to the end users right do you have poc reference architecture and uh, landing zones in place to ensure uh, successful modernization yes i think that will be we will assist you on all this journey right if you want right get in touch with us right if you want to do any pocs on any particular part if you have any use case in mind right just get in touch with us like right? we'll help you with uh, pocs architecture we do have reference architecture for all the use cases right um, i will help you with uh, um, like um, uh, getting the respective architecture for you and then like you can think about like uh, uh, even even poc right and then the team will help you on uh, building the poc for you as well and then based on that right you can start your journey into the uh, cloud as well i hope i answered that question okay and what are the parameters which need to be considered to evaluate whether my application is ready for modernization on the cloud right okay so this is a like tough question right so basically right uh, any application right if you see right uh if you feel like there is a performance issue right there is a scalability issue for example right when you are not able to scale your application as per the need so at the peak of uh, your application you see there are a lot of uh, requests timed out right so all these parameters right these are some of the parameters which you need to think right if you have running an on premise world right the infrastructure whatever you have right you are not able to scale automatically right but the cloud provides you an option with that scalability option right so these are some of the parameters this i'm giving you some of the parameters which you analyze right if you help me with what are the different challenges you have right we'll guide you like what are the different options we have and how how that will help you in my modernization journey as well right there are a lot of things we need to consider like before uh, evaluating your application and that we have a process evaluation process we'll do that uh, evaluation and then we'll help you with would be the best option for you to get into the modernization journey yes okay so the last question is how aws can provide assistant in migration monolithic to container based application yes as i told you right we, as i told you we we uh, already showcase one of the tool that is available for you right um uh, if you have a simple application you can run this tool right that will like app to container is an option right that will help you to understand your application workload what are the different dependencies right try to bring in um, um, uh, like docker image for you and sorry okay sorry about that okay so that will help you to um, uh, assist on the migration part actually if you want to migrate more so just just help with this your architecture right and then our team will help you with the further like how we can do that actually what are the different options available we'll guide you on the processes megnathan we have a chat uh, we yeah. have a question here in the chat as well yeah we have a question from yeah. tosif also megnathan if you can please address that One as second. uh chat so can I, is that is the question like can i deploy web services in lambda this is what you are referring right is it yes yeah okay yeah, you can do that right lambda again you can you can do that right so how actually it works is right so for example if you want to deploy a web service right what you need to do is the back end service you can do it in lambda right and for the api layer you use api gateway so api gateway is a service where actually you can define your api like right? we can it can be a http api it can be a rest api or if you want web socket api right you can define your api using api gateway right what are the different http protocol you want to use right you can map the backend using lambda 
and the lambda will have your uh, back end service right that will talk to database to bring any uh, any whatever whatever you want to do right the rest api right you can do that as we see lambda but the lambda right right now right um, the endpoint right we need to depend on api gateway but lambda is coming up with the new feature right uh, that will help you to build a web services directly as a lambda as well i hope uh, that answered your question Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. I think thank you, really uh, Meghnathan. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So we are bang on time. I think we have completed on time, and uh, it was a really great session. Uh, we saw a lot of participation in the poll as well, and uh, questions also being asked. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Meghnathan and Shantanu, and uh, thank you all the guests here. Uh, thank you for joining the session today. Hope it was effective awareness. regarding app modernization and its usage and uh, we'll be happy to connect with you for any business support and need do feel free to connect with us uh, with any of our business managers uh, i'm sure you have their contacts and uh, you know emails and uh, the invites that you received so we look forward to be connecting with you thank you so much and uh, have a great evening stay safe thank you